Hi students of class 8. How are you all? Now this is the another chapter. Conservation of plants and animals. So first in this chapter first topic is deforestation. What is the meaning of deforestation? The cleaning of forest and using the land for other purposes is called deforestation or cutting of the trees or uh, doing empty or the field for the different other works that is called deforestation. What are the causes? Why deforestations are there? To procuring land for cultivation, for preparing or for Managing the land for cultivation, for agriculture work. Building houses and factories. Because day by day population increases, the people want to um, do, uh, make more houses and flats etc. Therefore, forest has cuts there or cleaning there. That is the another purpose. Third, using wood as fuel and making furniture etc therefore cutting of trees are done there the natural causes of deforestation are forest fires and drought also the first three are man-made purposes why man or human being doing this and other two causes uh, is natural causes are natural which are those forest fires and drought so what are the consequences of deforestation results or effect increase in the temperature and pollution level on the earth increase in the level of temperature because there is no forest no wind no rain so temperature increases of earth and pollution level also increases. Increase in the level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere leading to global warming. Students, you know that carbon dioxide is used by plants to prepare their food. So, whenever plants are not there, deforestation there, then this carbon dioxide not used. So, it increases the level of global warming lowering of groundwater level why because after rain when rain or precipitation takes place due to forest this rain or water increases the ground level it enters to the inside the ground and in, in increases the ground level if there is no forest how could it possible next is disturbs the balance in nature it de decrease in rainfall leading to drought. Sukha pad jayega. Soil erosion and decrease in soil fertility leading to desertification because the roots of plants tightly held the soil. If forest is not there, plants are not there, then what are doing? Erosion takes place. And finally, desertification is, desert is formed there. Decrease in the water holding capacity of soil leading to floods. What is drought? You can see in the figure, pictures, what are there? No plants, so totally soil, uh, no rain, no water. So, soils are bricks there, dry, complete drying there. That is called drought. Fewer trees would mean that less carbon dioxide will be used up, resulting in its increased amount in the atmosphere. This will lead to global warming as CO2 traps the heat rays reflected by the earth. You know that there is atmosphere surrounded by the earth, carbon dioxide behaves like a blanket 
if more carbon dioxide there more heat is trapped inside the carbon dioxide gas so heat increases the increase in temperature on the earth disturbs the water cycle more atmosphere evaporation but less precipitation this could cause droughts next is desertification removal of top layer of soil exposes the hard and rocky lower layers which have very less humus and air as they are less fertile soil becomes like desert it is termed as termed as desertification upper layer of the soil contains very nutritive or fertilized fertile things and humus which used to grow up the plants easily and properly but whenever dirt takes place no rainfall soil eroded and goes through through the air another place converts into sand and then rocky layers exposes that means it forms the upper layer and then what happen no plants can be grown on the rocks finally the results desertification students desert is formed there like thar deserts or sahara deserts so why we need conservation of forest and wildlife you can now understand it's better forest and wildlife can be conserved by setting up areas like biosphere reserves wildlife sanctuaries national parks etc biosphere reserves are large area of protected land for conservation of biodiversity and the traditional life of the tribals living there that means human beings which are tribals not the urban peoples those peoples which live already in the inside the forest with various types of animals but not together they live alone separately but they lives also there peoples also live there this whole area is called biosphere reserves national parks are areas reserved for wildlife where they can freely use the habitats and natural resources only animals are living there which are wild jungly or they are dense whose animals who are not domestic or pets live there and use the habitat the areas or the things natural resources in their own way live wildlife sanctuaries are areas where animals are protected from any disturbance to them or their habitat national parks and wildlife sanctuaries are both the area where the wildlife are protected but reserved forest means what where it is a big area than the sanctuaries <coughs> now biosphere reserves are large areas of protected land for conservation of biodiversity biodiversity means animals plants both and the traditional life of the tribals living there also biodiversity is the variety of plants animals microorganisms found in the area example is pashmeri biosphere reserve consists of a national park called satpura and two wildlife sanctuaries are there bori and pashmeri flora and fauna found there <coughs> flora means plants fauna means animals flora found there salt teak wild mango jamun silver ferns etc and fauna are wild dog cheetah 
wolf, leopard, blue bull, barking deer, etc. Students, now the term is endemic species. Are those species of plants and animals found only in a particular area and not found anywhere else? For example, sal and wild mango are endemic flora of Pashmeri. They are only found there, not in other areas of India. Same bison, Indian giant squirrel and flying squirrel are the endemic fauna of this area also. You can see the picture and understand what is called bison or squirrel, flying squirrel etc. Next, wildlife sanctuary are areas where animals are protected from any disturbance to them or their habitat. The killing or capturing of animals in wildlife sanctuary is strictly prohibited. National park are areas reserved for wildlife where they can freely use the habitats and natural resources. Example, Satpura National Park, first reserve forest in India. Now, another topic is Project Tiger. Project Tiger was launched on 1st April 1973 by the government of India. The project aims at ensuring a viable population of Bengal tiger in the natural habitats and also to protect them from extinction and preserving areas of biological importance as a natural heritage forever represented as choose as possible the diversity of ecosystem across the tiger's distribution in the country. The project task force visualize these tiger reserves as breeding nuclei from which surplus animals would migrate to adjacent forest. That means what? Day by day when animals, this tiger, Bengal tiger especially, India is famous for Bengal tiger, a special type of tiger, a species of tiger, day by day ex go through the, uh, towards the extinction, they are protected there. So, the special area where the tiger is protected and breeding, doing breeding also there, that is the aim of Project Tiger. It is launched on 1st April 1973 by the government of India. Red Data Book is the book for organized studies and monitoring programs on rare and endangered species and their habitats. It is regularly consulted when developing and implementing special measures for the protection and rehabilitation of such species. Students, there are three types of animals uh, or one is extinct. Other is endangered and threatened. That means some animals are totally not seen today, but they are in history or in past present on the earth that is extinct. One is endangered. They are moving towards the extinction. And third is threatened. That means uh, animals who are now in present in a special area and day by day their population decreases. They are also going to the extinction after few days in future. So, one book is launched or made there. Central information sources are there. This is organized and monitoring programs for the this type of species and their habitats. This is called Red Data Book. Now, what I am saying before, endangered animals are those animals whose numbers are diminishing and might 
face extinction. They are not extincted nowadays, but maybe in future they are not available, not present on earth. That is called endangered elements. In this, tiger is one of the example. They are slowly diminishing. To protect the tigers in our country, the government launched the project Project Tiger to ensure the survival of tiger population. You know that dinosaurs have already become extinct. So in red data books, which keeps a record of all endangered plants and animals. Now the topic is ecosystem. Ecosystem means what? All type of plants, animals, microorganisms living in an area that is called ecosystem with non-living climate, water, soil, rivers, etc. also there. Migration. Migration means movement of animals from one place to another in the same habitat. For their Climatic changes are takes place when in an, one area they move from there to another. Example Siberian crane. When in Siberia there is very much cool ice is there, then it migrates towards India. Fly very long distance to reach another land are called migratory birds. Three R is there, you know. What are the three R's? Recycling, reuse and reject. About 17 full grown trees are required to produce one ton of paper. For one ton of paper, 17 full grown trees are cut or used. Paper can be recycled about 5 to 7 times for use. We should save, reuse and recycled paper to save not only trees but also to save the energy, water and chemicals used to make paper. I think you understand it better from this example why recycling of paper is necessary. So student don't throw the paper, don't tear paper from your notebook and don't make aeroplane through the Fresh paper. Reforestation, another R, means again planting the new trees. We should plant least, at least as many trees as we cut. We have already caused a lot of damage to our forest. If we have to regain our green wealth, reforestation is only the option.